In ancient times, Thessaly, a region in northern Greece, was ruled by Ixion, the leader of the Lapiths. This kingdom, with landscapes of the rocky mountains and fertile plains, was known for its brave warriors and majestic horses. Ixion, though a king, was not like other monarchs. From a young age, he was impulsive and fiery, qualities that led to his early rise to power. However, despite the victories and conquests he had won, he had a restless spirit. His subjects respected him for his leadership in battle but feared his unpredictable character and outbursts of anger. The throne brought him wealth and power, but it also surrounded him with intrigue and challenges. Each day in power reminded him of the fragility of his position, causing his distrust to grow and his temper to become more volatile. Although he had the support of some loyal nobles, others constantly sought ways to usurp his position or at least challenge his authority. His relationship with his people was complex. While some saw him as a strong leader necessary to maintain the unity of the kingdom, others whispered stories of his impulsive decisions and lack of scruples. Amidst this intricate web of alliances and tensions, Ixion sought to strengthen his position and legacy. He knew that marriage could be a valuable tool for cementing alliances and securing his lineage. To this end, he decided to marry a woman whose dowry promised to add to his already considerable fortune. However, after the wedding ceremony, a dispute arose between Ixion and Dionio, his father-in-law, over the delivery of the promised dowry. Dionio, feeling cheated by the king, withheld part of the dowry, which generated tensions between the two families. Ixion, with his pride wounded and seeking revenge, devised a master plan to get rid of his father-in-law without arousing suspicion. Under the facade of wanting to amicably resolve the disagreement, Ixion extended an invitation to Dionio to visit his palace. He promised that, at this meeting, they would reach a mutually beneficial agreement and that the honor of both families would be restored. However, behind this seemingly conciliatory offer, Ixion had prepared a deadly trap. In the depths of his palace, he had built a hidden pit filled with burning coals and poisonous snakes. When Dionio arrived, confident in his son-in-law's good faith, Ixion, with a treacherous smile, led him into the pit and pushed him mercilessly, watching as his father-in-law fell and met an excruciating death. The echo of Dionio's screams resounded through the palace, but Ixion remained impassive. Believing that he had achieved the perfect revenge and that his secret would die with his father-in-law in that infernal pit. News of the horrendous act spread quickly. The murder of a family member, especially a father-in-law, was one of the greatest offenses in Greek society. Not only had it broken the sacred bonds of the family, but it had also betrayed the trust expected between future political families. The other kingdoms, horrified by his act, turned their backs on him. Ixion became an outcast, tainted by the blood of his father-in-law and by his betrayal. No one, not even the priests, was willing to purify him of his grave sin. In the heavens, Zeus, the supreme king of all the gods, watched with watchful eyes the events involving Ixion. Despite Ixion's mistakes, Zeus felt compassion for the mortal. He thought that, perhaps, by giving him a second chance and showing him the splendor of Olympus, he could lead him to redemption and demonstrate the magnanimity of the gods. Zeus stretched out his golden hand and raised Ixion to Olympus, the divine abode, a place of incomparable splendor. Marble pillars glittered in the light of the eternal sun, and nectars and ambrosia flowed abundantly, offering their consumers indescribable pleasures. The gods strolled in gardens where flowers never withered, and the celestial music of the muses resounded in the air. Ixion, seeing all this, was astonished. The glory of Olympus and proximity to the gods must have shown him the right path. Zeus, in an act of generosity and trust, purified him of his sin. The sacred water cleansed his soul, and for a brief moment, Ixion felt the weight of his actions and the lightness of divine grace. However, while the purification should have been the beginning of his redemption, Olympus also presented an irresistible temptation. Hera, the wife of Zeus, with her beauty and grace, strolled through the gardens of Olympus. Ixion, his heart still tainted by impulsiveness and desire, could not help but be attracted to her. Although he had been saved by Zeus, his eyes now lusted after the queen of the gods. 
Arriving at Olympus, Ixion marveled at the majesty of the place. Clouds danced softly as the melodies of the muses filled the air. Golden statues glittered in the distance, and never-before-seen delicacies were offered at endless banquets. But among all that wonder, what most captured Ixion's attention was the goddess Hera. Hera, with her grace and dignity, walked around Olympus with a presence that was impossible to ignore. Her beauty was not only physical, she also radiated a power and wisdom that made her even more attractive. Ixion, already known for not controlling his impulses, was completely enchanted by her. His eyes followed her every move, and his thoughts began to wander in forbidden directions. Over time, Ixion sought ways to get closer to Hera. He made excuses to meet her and tried to impress her with stories of his exploits and riches. His looks became bolder, and the words he directed toward her, bolder. Hera, being a wise and perceptive goddess, noticed his intentions, but chose to remain silent, hoping that Ixion would come to his senses and stop on his own. However, there came a point when Ixion went too far. In a bold attempt, he tried to physically approach Hera. This time, the goddess could not keep quiet any longer. She went straight to Zeus and confessed everything that had been going on. Zeus, although already aware of Ixion's indiscretions, decided to test her loyalty. To confirm Ixion's intentions, Zeus created an exact copy of Hera using a cloud. This copy, called Nephil, was so convincing that even the most cunning gods could have been fooled. Ixion, consumed by lust and seeing an opportunity, soon approached Nephil, believing he had finally conquered Hera. Ixion's act confirmed his intentions and precipitated his downfall, proving that even in Olympus, the holiest of places, unbridled passion and betrayal could find a home. After the discovery of Ixion's betrayal, Olympus was engulfed in murmurs and scandal. The trust Zeus had placed in Ixion was betrayed, and the wrath of the god of thunder was palpable. A council of gods was convened to decide Ixion's punishment. As the gods deliberated, despair and fear gripped Ixion. He began to understand the magnitude of his actions and the wrath he had provoked in the immortal gods. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, spoke first. She reflected on the impulsive nature of mortals and how Ixion had crossed not once, but twice, the boundaries of morality and honor. He argued that any punishment should serve as a lesson to mortals and a reminder of the consequences of defying the gods. Hermes, the messenger of the gods, suggested tying Ixion to a wheel that would never stop turning, symbolizing the endless cycle of his bad decisions and the consequences of his actions. Demeter, the goddess of agriculture and harvest, proposed that the wheel is on fire, representing the fiery pit into which Ixion had thrown his father-in-law. Zeus, considering all the proposals, decided to combine them. He ordered that Ixion be tied to a flaming wheel and that it would spin eternally in Tartarus, the deepest and darkest realm of the underworld. Here, Ixion would be a living testimony of divine punishment, doomed to relive his betrayal with each turn of the wheel. Hera, though wounded by the betrayal, watched Ixion's fate with a mixture of compassion and justice. She recognized the need for severe punishment, but also regretted that Ixion, with all the opportunities given him, chose the path of destruction. And so, in the depths of Tartarus, Ixion's fiery silhouette continues to spin as a result of defying the divine order. <laughs>